Washington, D.C.'s Vietnam Veterans Memorial has become one of the most heavily visited monuments in our nation's capital. But it might not be here at all if it were not for the efforts of this man, Army veteran Jan Scruggs. When I got out of high school, I went into the Army, volunteered for the draft for two years uh, in uh, the Vietnam War. It was uh, pretty obvious that being a, a, a Vietnam veteran was not something to advertise sort of on your resume of life. So uh, that sort of resonated with me, that this is the way we're viewed. I decided to build a national Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and I didn't, didn't really know any, what I was doing. But I, a lot of great people got involved. It was his concept, and started everything with uh, his own seed money. Just put the money in, and he began, and this was 30 years ago, so things were done differently. He began pounding the halls of Congress, because it's on the National Mall. We had to get approval, congressional support. The initial design for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was the, the Maya Lin uh, design. She had the most brilliant design because we, we said in the competition that we wanted this to be reflective and contemplative and horizontal, and she met all that. We got it built in record time. We started in 1979, and it was completed in 1982. How are you going to beat that? Our sort of credo was, look, we want to separate the war from the warrior. People can debate the wisdom of our foreign policy decisions, uh, but they can't really debate whether their neighbor's kid who volunteered for four years in the Marine Corps uh, did the right thing for his country. He did the right thing for his country. So let's honor the people who served. People leave the most incredible mementos, tokens, at the wall. People left them for a reason. It, it meant something to them. I remember just after we put the panels up and somebody snuck over the fence and placed a pair of cowboy boots like about halfway down the east panel. It was like a spooky sort of thing to see. But within a week, there were hundreds and hundreds of items that had been left there. We here have baby Huey. Never met you. My, your niece and nephew are coming to the wall to, to kind of pay tribute to you. But Nothing unusual about finding an article like this. No, no. This is from, you know, between family members. Um, this is the wreckage of a B-52 helicopter um, from a mid-air collision in Vietnam. The number here that they wrote on is representative of the highest amount of casualties um, of any Catholic school in the United States. Here we have a baseball that was left um, at the wall. There are approximately 400,000 objects that have been left at the wall thus far. In my view, it initially started out as very cathartic. People would, would sort of have an emotional something while they were there and they would leave a spontaneous object. But over time, um, people started to create things to be left at the wall. This is a model of a prisoner of war camp. It was Many of the things that are left at the wall are folk art. They're created by the hands of the people that leave it. It's just like you're buying this stuff off the shelf. People create things to leave them at the wall. Everything that's left there has, has a meaning to someone. Sitting in this box face up was this wallet sized image of a North Vietnamese soldier and a little girl. There's also a letter that accompanies it and the donor describes how he confronted this North Vietnamese soldier. They paused for a moment, but the American ended up taking his life. And for years he had carried this photograph. One of the major newspapers in Vietnam, they ran a copy of the, uh, uh, the photograph. That soldier also has a son. He said, that little girl you've often wondered about is his daughter. That's the only photograph of the father they have. So here is where we store all of the objects in the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Collection. And we've been collecting since the wall opened, pretty much, since it was dedicated. So you can imagine the collection. 
Is the it sign organized of it. by material or date or? We have everything organized by date because we have such a variety of materials and objects that are left that it would be really difficult to sort them all by object type. This is a letter left to a gentleman on the wall called William Stocks, aka Spanky. And Spanky's mom has been coming to the wall and leaving things since our very first exception that we ever collected. And here we have a six pack of Schlitz uh, left by Jeff. And I just love the idea of libations. This is something that people have been doing since people were people. It's a way to honor their dead and commemorate with them and celebrate those who have gone from this life. North Vietnamese regulars popped out of hiding and ambushed the whole um, formation. And one of the helicopters was shot down. This rotor blade is from that helicopter that was shot down. The crew chief came under such heavy fire that he immediately got back in their copter and ordered everyone to lift off, leaving Jerry behind. They've sent several helicopters over the next few days looking for Jerry, but no trace of him was ever found again. It's a reel-to-reel -reel player and a box of reel-to-reel -reel tapes that was left in 2012, so fairly recently. These are songs of the Vietnam War recorded while serving in Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. About 20 years ago, this group of veterans brought this bike down to the wall, and it really speaks to all of us about the nature of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial um, and the conflict itself. The Vietnam conflict, the wall, is providing them a, um, a conduit to release whatever needed emotions they have to help with their healing process. Six, seven, eight, nine. Here we go, this gentleman right here, Calvin Terrell. Some people didn't like it. They thought it was, you know, black's the color of shame, all the other monuments are white, and so there was this big argument. So we said, okay, we, we will have a traditional element with this unconventional memorial, which was the three servicemen statue, 1984. Once that was built, the uh, women who served in Vietnam were, were very upset and said, well, we can't believe this. You didn't have, you don't have a Vietnam women's statue. And uh, they pushed and got through Congress legislation to authorize that. Uh, it was built in 1993. And there's uh, an Agent Orange uh, in memory plaque. It's at the site. So there, these are the elements. The site is filled. So now the education centers can start appealing to these different groups. The education center at the wall, or on our National Mall, is intended to be a capstone experience for your time on our National Mall. Visitors will enter a place of civic reflection. The uh, basic mission will be to honor America's legacy of service from 1775, actually, which is when the U.S. Army or sort of formed itself to fight the British all the way through to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, the primary focus of the exhibits will be the wall of faces and how we remember the fallen. And give a face to the faceless. Once every hour for five minutes, we're going to show the photographs of the fallen. So that, with working with the other exhibits, this will become a place of uh, of reunion, and this is a place that all the veterans will go to. We have a responsibility at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund to capture all of those tokens, mementos that are left at the wall. When we have the education center built, a collection of those will be on static display for all of the world to see. Objects related to soldiers and the things they carried. Our current situation, we are a 501c3. All of the programs and ceremonies, all of the maintenance, all of the anything else that we're doing and the education center has to be from private funds. Well, I like uh, hanging around there when I get the chance. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. But the people who are like in one battle or something, I've met uh, to a lot of relatives and friends and neighbors who went there to, to do an etching. That's always the, the great sort of way to meet someone when they're rubbing name. You just I ask, you know, whose name are you rubbing? And, and then they sort of tell you the story. And I've met some of the great soldiers from the, the Vietnam War. 
uh, some of the great uh, soldiers uh, in today's military as well. Once a year, we put new names on it, and also uh, in the country of Vietnam, we have uh, U.S. military personnel who actually try to find the remains of our soldiers. For most veterans, it is a very cathartic experience. I'm not sure it closes their, their pain, ends their struggles, but cathartic experiences are important, important parts of our lives. So the emotion associated with seeing the names, getting some closure, by honoring somebody, maybe even leaving an item there, it's a very important and, and amazing part of the experience.